I read a, a quote you gave that you said, if uh, you heard somebody was going in for neck surgery, you would tell them immediately to get a second and third opinion. Absolutely. I went for the surgery because I thought I was going to get paralyzed if I didn't go for the surgery. You know, he said it was really severe. They said because his spine, um, one part of his spine was not getting spinal fluid and it was trapped, so there was no fluid going between. So I came out of the surgery crippled virtually. Three months I was in absolute diabolical agony. Everybody thought I was going to die, you know. To be honest with you, the, the way I felt, death would have been a welcome gift. So, I mean, I, I, mean I, I haven't been pain free in three years. What did the surgeon say after the surgery? Oh, he said, you know, we've put these pins in here and there, and um, it wasn't as bad as we thought. And um, he's, you know, he's going to be fine. He's about six months, and he's going to be fine. You'll see. And how did you see stuff worsen from there? Well, the list of drugs was unbelievable what they had him on. and. I would go in there and I would just say, look, this list is ridiculous. You have to cut him off these drugs. He cannot come out and have to take all these drugs. And there was about 60 or 70 pills that I think they had him on. And we had to, I kept begging them, wean him down before he comes home because with all these drugs you've given him, I, he would have to be in a wheelchair because he couldn't stand, couldn't even go to the toilet on his own, unassisted, because he was so, you know, out of it. And during the time that followed when the doctor said he should be starting to improve, what are you saying? Some days he would be in tears with the pain. And he knew, you know, he, he knows. And he just said, you've got to get me off these pills. I have to. I haven't succumbed to the, the pain pills and all that, because it's dangerous. I've had a problem with them before, so. How, how hard has that been for you to stay away from those? Well, it's kind of like a, I'm a junkie anyway, so it's like, I have to really, I can't have it in my possession. I have to, I have, to, I have, to have a, a nurse with me now everywhere I go. It's like my, my livelihood's gone, you know. It's not the, the money side, it's just, it's just, I, I'm, you know, burden to my wife, burden to everybody that works for me. I mean, I've never been like this in my life. Do you think had you not gotten the operation I, back then, you would have been paralyzed? No. I don't think, I think the guy was f***ing insane. I mean, I'm paralyzed now to a certain degree. I can't f***ing walk. If I should get on the, in the gym for two hours, you know, I can't do 20 minutes now. And the gym was something you did every day. Every working out single day I go and do an hour and sweat buckets. And I'm just, I'm just it's, not like, it's not like I was the old one to be laid up for. I've never been this long laid up in my life. The damage, not Ozzy's physical damage, but the emotional damage that's been caused to our family has just been extraordinary. You know, we've had struggles with Ozzy with addiction over the years, and he'd been so great for so long, clean and sober, and just living his life to the full and loving his touring. And they have a number one album with Black Sabbath, and then he puts out a solo album that goes, you know, number three all over the world. And he's just running around the stage like a, you know, a lunatic. And as I say, living the life, you know, loving his life, loving his sobriety, loving, everything, loving his grandkids and just so happy for once in his life. And then, boom, you have a fall and everything, everything is gone. And then to see it taken away and the effect that it had on all of us was, um, it's, been, it's been a tough, tough ride. I mean, look, I know that people put up with so much more, but um, for for us, it's been it's been a really tough time. The the 
past couple years the specifically, right? Two and a half years. It's Aussie says three years. I'm sure to him it must feel like 10 years he's been, you know, unable to to live a normal life. In 2020 was agony. I, I can't really remember, but other people can. All I remember, I've been, I was in absolute agony. I was be, just beginning a tour. Right. And then the convent thing got in. So all the tickets were sold. I mean, they're waiting for us to go back on the run. I can't fulfill the contract being like this. When the pandemic hit, I thought, oh, that's kind of like blessing in disguise because that'll go and I'll be healed by the time it, get, by the time it gets back over and we can go and do shows. But I'm no better. I, I can't f more. I can't function. I feel like a 99 year old guy, you know. This was just this year we went to the Mayo uh -huh. Clinic to get, you know, another opinion on his surgery, the first surgery. And um, they wanted to operate on him too and said that it was the wrong operation that he had been given. Oh, I haven't got no support on the back of my neck. So my, your head is a third of the weight of your body. So the gravity gets in and it's, I can't hold my head up. I'm not, it's, this arm's so, it's weak, this leg's weak, I can't feel my feet in the evening. It really f me up, you know. Which I kind of went, oh well, but then I, I'm not done yet, you know. I'm not f done yet. And it's like, I've got things to do, I've got people to see, I've got shows to do. You know, I've, I've managed to make a record or two in the last three years. But it's the hardest thing I have to bear is the fact that my brain is still there, but my body's all mangled up, you know.